How to write songs like Elliot Smith. Number one, be born a genius. That worked out really great for me, but I'm sure that not everybody has that luxury. So we're actually gonna go over some other things that are really helpful tips uh, that you'll see prevalent in a lot of his songwriting. So number one, this guitar is tuned to step down. Maybe that's the first thing you can do. So instead of E, A, D, G, B, E, it is D, G, C, F, A, D. Okay, now I think that the number one most important thing that you'll hear when you listen to his songs is he's got one kind of secret, one trick that he does better than anybody else that I've ever really kind of like broken down uh, songwriting with. And that is moving major chords in minor thirds. If you take nothing else from this video, that is definitely it. Moving major chords in minor thirds. So you kind of have to understand what that means, all right? Now, major chords. <laughs> Are great you probably already know that like in the key of C there are three major chords in any in any key there are three major chords all right so in the key of C we've got like a C major an F major and a G major all right so those are always gonna be the same width apart we talk about like spacing in music with the word interval okay so an interval can be measured in frets or steps all right on a guitar it's easy to measure in frets so again like uh, and uh, like, let's take the key of G, right? The three major chords in the key of G are G, C, and D, all right? So if we have a G, the third fret on the low E string, that C on the same fret will be right here, the eighth fret. So from three to eight, that's a fourth in the major scale, okay? G, A, B, C. The next one would be a fifth. D would be a, a five way, G, A, B, C, D, okay? So you'll always find the same spacing between those major chords in anything, all right? The thing that Elliot Smith does is really cool that you'll hear that uh, I've got a bunch of examples that I can actually show you, is he'll place those major chords in spots where they maybe don't belong, all right? And one place is always a minor third away from another major chord, all right? A minor third is gonna be three frets. Okay, so like here's that G again. If we take a minor third from here, it would be one, two, three. So the distance between G, the third fret on the E string, and the sixth fret on the E string, this would be like a B flat. This happens in the G minor scale, so it's a minor third, that three fret distance, okay? Now something that's kind of unusual, again, that is a staple in Elliot's playing, is he'll take major chords and move them a minor third away from each other, all right? So that's like the, the thing that, You'll really kind of develop an ear for when listening to him, maybe hear it in other people's songs too. That is, uh, it's very kind of attention grabbing, but it's something that he really worked in flawlessly to like a bunch of his songs. Uh, like for example, Do you miss me? Miss misery, like you say you do half. We met in the park. So that right there goes from F, three frets higher. Okay, to A flat, G sharp, however you want to look at it. That's just one example. Something's happening, don't speak too soon. I called the boss off and I made my move. I got nowhere to go. So again, that right there, B minor, E to G. Son of Sam, right? That's a good uh, use of it. I'm floating in a black balloon. All day on Easter afternoon. All right, so distorted reality, that's a D major chord to an F major chord. Again, you won't find those two chords in a lot of songs together, right? That distance from D to F. It doesn't always have to be three frets higher, but the distance between a D and an F is a minor third, okay? Uh, what I used to be. Right there, okay, and happiness. Now this is technically a minor seven flat five chord, but the idea is the same, going from a C, three frets higher, into, you know, you can use a major chord that sounds very Elliott Smith-like. There's no better example than the song Sweet Adeline, which I consider kind of the quintessential Elliott Smith riff, uh, which I'll link you to a video, just breaking down just that riff by itself. But basically it's a G to a B flat. Okay, so, all right, but he's doing it in a very, you know, eloquently picked arrangement going from that G to a B flat. Now, the actual best example of that is the chorus in Sweet Adeline, which is like. All right, so we've got, 
E flat, B flat to F. Where are we going from F? Three frets higher to A flat, eh? D flat. You do that a few times. And then the last time, F minor third higher, minor third higher from that, and another minor third higher from that. Eh? Okay, so that's crazy. That's the, that's some crazy use of major chords in minor thirds. All right, we've got F to A flat to B to D. That brings us back to the riff of Sweet Adeline, okay? So really, start thinking about maybe incorporating some of these intervals. It doesn't have to be this interval, but maybe unusual intervals taking uh, just different chord voicings in. And again, his thing, major chord, minor third apart. Okay? Uh, you can do the same thing with minor chords to get a different thing. Again, it's not supposed to be in there diatonically, as they say, but that's just kind of, you know, the uh, that's the sound of moving major chords, minor thirds apart, all right? Another thing that he does a lot is he'll use parallel minor to kind of transition between things. So a couple examples of that are like uh, between the bars. F to F minor. Okay, again, in no key should F be major or minor at the same time, but he uses that F major to go to minor a lot. Another example doing the exact same chord would be like... So Say Yes has the exact same thing. You know, I, the Beatles used that a lot. I think that's probably maybe where he got that from. So parallel minor is another good one that you might want to use. Uh, and also too, I think something that a lot of people recognize is just really hammering home the bass note of different chords, all right? So let's start with say yes again for that, right? So it's a C with a B, then an A. So that's all kind of like around the same thing. C major, transitioning, A minor. So again, it's all about hitting those bass notes. F, a C, B. You can use them, you can walk those bass notes uh, around. Again, just a lot of different th songs. And the more you listen to it, the more you learn some of his songs, you'll notice uh, kind of common themes as far as, uh, you know, using uh, those major chords, minor thirds apart, uh, taking bass notes for a walk between chords, maybe experimenting by detuning your guitar, a half step, a whole step, sometimes even a whole step and a half, using parallel minor in your arrangement. The more you kind of just really be thoughtful about what's happening, the more maybe you can incorporate the stuff into your own writing. So hopefully you found some of that helpful and eye-opening. And if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.